Now, if you're not looking for any kind of explanations, if you're not interested in the why, if all you want is the settings, here they are. Stop the video, set them up, and you're done. If you want to go a little deeper, stick with it. So let's start setting up this camera for vlogging. Number one, making sensible use of auto modes. Number two, saving on battery life as much as possible or as much as it makes sense given a certain scenario. And number three, getting the best usability out of it. Now, when I set up the NX500 for vlogging, I shoot it in a perch or priority mode. So make sure the main mode dial is set to A. Then make sure you're using the lowest f-stop value possible to get the most bokeh. Use the top dial to select, in the case of the 1650 kit lens, a value of f3.5, which is shown right here. Once that is done, make sure to go into movie preview mode, which you will accomplish by hitting the trash can button once. Now let's dive into the menu hitting the menu button. Now in this tutorial, we are not going to concern ourselves with any kind of setting that doesn't directly relate to video shooting. So we're gonna start with the ISO, leave it set to auto. It's gonna take your mind off of the technical aspects of video shooting and keep it free to be responsive and reactive. OLED color turned on just makes the image on the screen look nicer. So it's easier for you to judge what you're shooting. White balance, once again, leave it set to auto. So your mind is free to vlog. Picture wizard, you can leave this off if you don't wanna do post-production color grading. If you do want to do post-production color grading, you should try to get the flattest possible profile out of this camera. In this case, enter the picture visit, come all the way to the right where it says custom one, and then adjust the saturation by going to about minus five, completely de-sharpen the image, and completely decontrast it. And that's going to give you the flattest possible profile, which is best for post-production later on. Hit OK to set this mode. Autofocus mode, of course, for vlogging, we want continuous autofocus. Autofocus area, usually multi-autofocus area in combination with face detection works well. Normal is the setting we want here. Touch autofocus is fine. Manual focus responsiveness. With the kind of zoom ring you're getting with the 1650 kit lens, I believe the high setting is what will benefit most people. Autofocus release priority, focus, focus peaking. Now that is for manual focusing in video mode. Level for me is either normal or low. High, normal or low, these values only define how bright the peaking color shows up on screen. On high, sometimes all you get is peaking color. That's too much for me, so I'd much rather go with a setting of normal or low. The color I prefer is definitely red. In my experience, it works in the most situations. Not interesting, not interesting. Brightness adjustment guide, which is Samsung lingo for zebras, is a very useful feature because it indicates overexposed areas of your image by overlaying a moving zebra pattern. Not interesting. OS anti-shake. I like to use mode 2 because it seems to be the most effective one. Metering. Usually center weight would make the most sense because usually when vlogging you're in the center and you want to make sure that you're exposed correctly. However, if you're wearing very bright clothes, maybe even white clothes, they will be overexposed. So if you are wearing very, very bright clothes near the color tone of white, multimetering is better because this way your clothes won't be overexposed. Dynamic range. I like to use the Smart Range Plus option because it helps a little in preventing highlights from clipping and upping the shadows a little. Let's move on to the next main menu, Movie Size. Now I prefer to shoot the NX500 using Full HD resolution at 50 frames per second. It's 50 because I'm using the PAL standard. If you're say from North America and you're shooting NTSC, this would be 60 frames respectively. Also, I think Full HD at 50 frames per second is a good compromise between overall video quality and file size. On top of that, I can always go from a higher frame rate to a lower frame rate in post-production, but not the other way around. Of course, should you want to, you also have two 4K video modes at your service. And also for special occasions, if you want a 4X slow motion later on, you can shoot 100 frames per second at 720p resolution. For me, most of the time, Full HD at 50 frames per second or 60 respectively, it is. Movie quality, now I definitely use Pro because it's the highest bit rate and it'll give you the cleanest image. Fast, slow movie, different options, choose whatever fits your needs given a certain scenario. Autofocus responsiveness, now because vlogging usually heavily relies on the intuition of the video video shooter, and usually intuition heavily benefits from speedy tech, I will set the autofocus responsiveness to plus two and the autofocus shift speed to fast. Fader, we don't need. 
voice recording or with this camera in general sound recording of course is turned on. Now the wind cut filter of this camera I'm definitely not a big fan of. I'm a much bigger proponent of using micro wind muffs like these. They are going to do a far better job in protecting your audio track from wind distortion. They are easily installed and not very expensive. If you want to know how to set those up check out the link in the top right hand corner. Mic level number two the golden middle usually works fine. Smart range plus once again I like to use this option. So let's go to the next main menu. Color space Adobe RGB because it's the larger color space will give you a slight edge but probably you're not gonna notice much. User display, icons make sense, date and time don't, button also makes sense because this is a very capable touch screen. Grid line, it's either none or the 3x3 because I think the 3x3 is actually a good compromise between a grid that helps you in composing shots but doesn't crowd up the screen. Sender marker, not needed. Key mapping. Now the custom button, the trash can button right here, is set to movie standby. Makes sense. Auto exposure lock button. The one right here on top of the camera, right next to the on and off switch, is set to auto exposure lock. It's a useful feature, but not heavily used in vlogging. So you could set this to another function. Me personally, I will probably benefit the most from setting it to picture visit. Usually I will shoot the standard profile, but should I encounter a situation that I want to get the best out of, I might choose to shoot the flat profile. In which case, setting it to this option would allow me to quickly switch picture profiles. You could also set it to the grid line. Most of the time you're not going to use it, but should you find yourself designing a shot, having it set to grid line, you can easily turn the grid line on and off. The EV button right here on top of the menu button is set to exposure value, which makes sense because in combination with the command dial, it is easy to compensate for the exposure. Now the command dial on its own, once again, the one on top right here in aperture priority mode is set to change the aperture. IFN setting, not interesting. Lens button speed settings, not interesting. Touch operation on. Autofocus lamp off electronic shutter off, mobile link NFC image size original. If you've shot stills with the camera and you want to transfer them to your smartphone, this setting will transfer the original image with the highest possible quality. Next, main menu. Sound. Now the less attention a vlogging camera attracts for vlogging, the better. So I turned all of this off. Quick view, off. Display adjust. Well, display brightness. Minus two is fine zero is fine. Plus two, on the other hand, is not going to get you a workable performance on a bright sunny day. So, because it saves battery life, with me it's either zero or even minus two. Auto brightness, you know it from your smartphone, you could turn it on or off. I prefer to have it set to off. Display color, here you could adjust the display color. It's a very well calibrated screen though, so I never found the need to do that. Horizontal calibration, not interesting. Auto display off, one minute and power save five minutes, in my opinion, are the settings that most people are gonna benefit from when vlogging. Help guide display, not interesting. Language, your respective one. Date and time, not interesting. HDMI settings, not interesting right now. File name, file number, and folder type. Now that is interesting. File name, date, is better than standard. File number, series, is better than reset. And folder type, date is better than standard again. Because if you set it up this way, you're gonna get the best folder file structure for vlogging right off the SD card. You're gonna have individual folders named after the day they were created on, containing individual files also named after the day they were shot on. This way, you don't have doubles and you always know which file belongs to which day. Here you can format the SD card, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi network, my smartphone, Bluetooth auto time set, and Wi-Fi privacy lock are settings we are going to concern ourselves with in another video. Sensor cleaning, you could do it here every once in a while. You could also do it on startup or on shutdown. Device information and open source license, not interesting. And that's it for the menu. Now, if you want to quickly adjust the screen brightness, exit movie preview mode, swipe down from the top, and there you go. If you want to switch between manual focus and autofocus, you could either tap this button right here, bringing you to manual focus, which is where peaking comes in, or you could use the FN button to switch between continuous autofocus and manual focus. To use exposure compensation, press hold the EV button and select the exposure value that fits the situation via the command dial. To quickly switch picture profiles, exit movie preview mode by hitting the trash can button once, hit the auto exposure lock button on top of the camera next to the on and off switch, and select the picture style you need. To shoot video with this picture style, enter movie preview mode again. So this is how I set up an NX500 for vlogging. If you use these settings, you will get the best autofocus performance out of the camera, you will have the best usability for vlogging, and hopefully the most fun using this awesome camera. So if you liked the video, if you found it helpful, please make sure to leave a thumbs up, it's greatly appreciated. 
Any kind of comment or feedback is welcome and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. All the tech that I've used in this video is linked in the description. As always, thank you so much for your time, thank you for watching and hopefully see you again soon.